These are five easy ways to help reclaim your privacy in an age where it's very hard to do so. When I'm in public and I'm meeting someone and they ask what they can do to help their privacy, these are pretty much the five things I share with them, so they're not really tied to any experience level. Let's get into it after a quick message from our sponsor. Notesnook is one of my favorite tools. It's an open source, end-to-end -end encrypted, not just notes, but productivity tool. The main issue with tools like Evernote or the Google Suites or any of these other suites that are productivity tools is they don't actually allow you to own your own data. They can see all of your data because it's not end-to-end -end encrypted, meaning that only you have your encryption keys. Notesnook changes this because they allow you to own your own encryption keys. So even if someone begged Notesnook to take your data, they literally wouldn't have the ability to do that. They're open source, so you can verify it's encrypted the way I just told you it is. They're also available on all devices, including in the web, so it's completely accessible regardless of who you are and what devices you use, from Linux to custom ROMs and anything else that you want. So it's private, secure, and extremely functional, and it's free to try to see if it's right for you. Check it out down in the description, and thank you Notesnook for sponsoring this video. The first thing, which is the most critical and really should be a default for every single person in any country where this is an option, freeze your credit. The number one reason why people want your personal information for malicious reasons is to steal your identity. The number one way to prevent identity theft is to freeze your credit. So to do this, what you're going to do is you're going to make an account with Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. Most likely they have your information anyway, so you claiming this account is actually stopping someone else from claiming it on behalf of you. This does not impact your credit score. All it does is require you to log in and unfreeze your credit when you apply for something that's like a new credit card or a mortgage or a car loan. What this prevents is somebody who gets your personal information, like that big social security breach that happened recently, and just going to the local bank and, well, opening something under your name. Again, if there's one thing to take away from this video, freeze your credit. The second thing I share with people, which is very broad and I wish it was a little bit more definitive, but it's just to check up on privacy settings. Yes, using Facebook, but with better privacy settings does give a false illusion of actual privacy. But at the end of the day, the kind of privacy most people care about is the kind of privacy which they can see has a real impact. So it's not surveillance capitalism, it's not government surveillance, which are both serious problems, but uh, my goal when I'm speaking with someone for the first time is to get them to see um, instant gratification for their privacy improvements. And I think privacy settings are a great way to make people feel some of those improvements. A lot of people think that they're actually using services privately when in reality they go in and check and realize, oh crap, I didn't realize in my Google account they were collecting literally every single thing I recorded with OK Google. And I think most people have a Google account and that's a great place to start for them to really see what kind of data Google collects and what kind of power they actually still have while still using Google. Again, there's a lot more to do, but this is for people who are new to privacy, and I think that getting people into their privacy settings gets them thinking about privacy and is a great first step for them. Or for you, if you're new to this as well. The next thing that really speaks to people, and I think everybody can really get behind and is a fantastic first step for privacy, is secure communication. This means that you have a safe place to talk with people you love, and this is not a difficult thing for people to understand. I recommend people start with just basic end-to-end -end encrypted services. We talk a lot about more advanced ones here, but at the end of the day, a lot of people are still using SMS and other just completely unencrypted platforms for pretty sensitive conversations. So I highly recommend just get people to end-to-end -end encrypted messengers. iMessage is fine, WhatsApp is fine, and if you want better their signal, and it's still extremely usable and that's what I use and recommend to most people and there are many more advanced uh, messengers out there but for those of you who are new make sure you're moving as much as possible to end-to-end -end encrypted messaging and this also applies to email get a free Proton and a free Tuda account and this is a good place to start sending some emails that are end-to-end -end encrypted it doesn't have to be all or nothing just get the tools so you can use them when the opportunity arises this fourth one is fun because it's not inherently about privacy and it's digital minimalism and this is something I talk about a lot, which is the fewer accounts you have, the less apps you have, the fewer permissions you grant, 
generally the better your privacy is going to be. Now this is just a general rule. I can find you a million exceptions to this rule, but if more people just chose not to open the account in the first place, if people chose not to give their data to this extra service, if people just didn't click those extra buttons for those permissions, they would be better off at the end of the day. So I like to almost just encourage people to have a by default don't use or hand over approach versus right now what people do is they kind of hand everything out by default. So digital minimalism is really important. Go through your phone, delete some apps, you'll get extra storage, your phone will be faster and you'll get better battery life. There's a lot of perks outside of just privacy, but getting people to think about data and trying to minimize it as much as possible is a really important mindset to carry into the entire privacy journey, no matter where you are. And the fifth thing is basic security on at minimum your important accounts. It's hard to convince people to go through hundreds of accounts, set up 2FA for all of them, unique passwords for all of them, and get them all in a password manager and categorize them. But what is easy to convince people to do is to protect their most sensitive accounts, which include things like bank accounts, your credit card accounts, which hopefully you set up from step one, and also things like your emails and anywhere else that's considered a sensitive account for the individual. These are the accounts that I highly recommend having strong, unique passwords that are not just similar to the other ones, but completely unique. I also recommend enabling 2FA, which is where you have an additional layer of authentication before you can get into the account. Now, even if you have five accounts, you might be wondering, how do I generate five secure uh, passwords to these accounts? I highly recommend a password manager for this exact situation because it's really hard to keep track of things. We highly recommend ProtonPass and Bitwarden to people new to passwords, but if you prefer just writing them down or coming up with your own system of memorizing them, as long as they're not sitting unencrypted on your computer, it's probably going to be an upgrade for your security. Ideally, people are applying these practices to all of their accounts because that gives you the best protection and it's what I do and recommend, but as starting points for people, getting those most sensitive accounts is the most critical thing. Now for getting through the main part of the video, I wanted to give a few bonus tips as well. I always like to encourage people to move to a browser that's similar to their current browser but has better privacy practices. So a really easy swap for me is Chrome to Brave, for example. I think it's a really easy one that adds ad blocking and actually really nifty features aside from just happening to be better for privacy. A search engine is also a really easy place to get people to make a good positive difference. A lot of people like Google a lot and they can just shift to start page, which gives you Google results. There are also things like DuckDuckGo and Brave Search, but they don't use Google results, so it might be a little bit less familiar to people, but maybe they'll still like the results nonetheless. And finally, enabling automatic updates is a really critical part of security, which is that they're patching the most critical vulnerabilities that can be used to hack their devices. It's hard to convince people to do this because not everybody likes them. No! But get people to start using automatic updates for their operating systems and their software and apps. It's very important and it's something that is an easy thing to do and it's just a toggle for a lot of people. Now these are beginner tips and there is a lot more to do if you actually want to have robust protection. But for most people, especially those who aren't being targeted, as long as they're doing better than the average person, they have a much lower likelihood of having to deal with the real world privacy and security impacts of something bad happening to them. So spread the tips in this video, send them to as many people as you want. It's supposed to be easy and digestible. And if you're following the stuff on this list, you're doing better than most people. So congrats to you. Now, there's a lot more to do, and we have a guide called the Become Anonymous Guide, which sounds scary, but it's very approachable and walks you through the countless more tips. But you can just start with the Become Anonymous Guide to start this little deep dive and see what you're missing out on because there's some really cool tools out there. I really want to thank Notes like our sponsor. I want to thank all of our patrons who make this possible, and I'll see you all next time on TechLore.